Hi, Chef Patrick Mitchell here. I'm excited to be a part of the 17th Annual Culinary Educators Training Conference this year. This conference is produced by the Texas Restaurant Association Education Foundation and the Texas Beef Council, two organizations that have done a tremendous amount for our industry. I'm coming to you from my home kitchen because of the, the COVID-19 pandemic that's going on and everything is kind of turned upside down there. So we're recording this so that you can share it in the conference and, uh, and view it there. Because of the circumstances here with the cameras and all that, I'm gonna do all my cooking right here on the island. I'm gonna go over to one side to prep, I'm gonna cook over here. Normally I'd be prepping behind me, turning around just like in a restaurant line and cooking and, and doing things like that. But this again is like I say, a very unique situation. We wanted to make sure we captured all of the angles and you could see everything that was going on. So today I'm gonna to demo Tornado's Rossini. Tornado's Rossini is a dish that's a, a classic Escoffier dish. It's been around for years and years. Uh, it's twin medallions of beef, seared in butter, served on top of a crouton. On top of that, we have a piece of seared foie gras and a pergadine sauce. Pergadine sauce is a demi-glace with a Madeira and truffle flavoring in it. We're also gonna serve it with a little bit of sauteed asparagus. For the asparagus, we're gonna go ahead and blanch that asparagus in advance, put it into plenty of boiling salted water. We're gonna cook it uncovered like any other green vegetable. If you cover it, those gases can't escape and it, and it loses its color. So we're gonna boil it in that hot salted water, drop it into an ice bath when it's done, and that ice bath is gonna lock that color into it. So then at service, we're just gonna saute it and reheat it, and it'll be nice and green. We're gonna sear the medallion of beef. And <clears throat> I wanna talk about that a little bit. A lot of times when I travel around, I see in, in kitchens, people are putting cold food into a cold pan, putting it on a stove and turning the flame on. There's very, very, very few occasions where you're gonna be doing that, or you should be doing that. Uh, typically what you wanna do is you wanna start out with a hot pan and hot oil. So we have a saying called hot pan, cold oil. What that means is put the pan on the stove get it hot before you add the oil into it. This way the pan's hot, then the oil's hot. When you put that product in, it sears it nicely and, and you get a, a good um, sear to it. So what we're looking for in that sear, we're looking for that Maillard reaction, which gives you flavor. It also gives some color to the protein, but more than anything, it seals that, that, that meat and seals those juices inside. So you put it in, sear the one side, turn it over, sear the other side, the juices can't escape during cooking. But what that also means is when you're done cooking, you need to let that product rest a little bit because those juices are really kind of going around and, and you know all thing, a lot of going on in there while it's cooking and hot. If you let it rest, those juices kind of absorb back into the protein and then when you slice it, it's a nice juicy flavorful product. If you pull it out too soon and slice it, all that juice is gonna run out on the board. I'm sure you've seen that. But um, we're gonna go ahead and get started, so we're gonna do some prep now. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and get started here with uh, some of our prep. First thing we're gonna do is get the asparagus ready. Normally, with large asparagus, you wanna peel it. But I've got pencil thin asparagus here, and one of the unique things about that is you, it's tender already, so you don't have to peel any tough skin off. So what we do is we just take the tip and the end of this asparagus here, and we just bend it right until it snaps. So we'll just keep um, going like that, and then once we get them all snapped, We'll uh, trim them so that they're all at the same length. And that saves us from having to peel such uh, thin asparagus. If you peel this really thin asparagus, you're gonna end up with nothing left. So we just snap them at the, the natural breaking point. We'll line them up and uh, take our knife and Cut them so that they're all straight. Discard that, save that. And we're gonna go, the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna uh, mince our shallots. So we're just gonna take the shallot, cut it in half like that. Cut it down like this. and just get a really nice fine mince in there. Do 
Do the other half. Now we're going to use these shallots in a couple of things. I'm going to use some of the shallots when I uh, saute the asparagus. And then I'm going to use some of the shallots when I make the uh, peregrine sauce. So we'll use that. And we'll put this into a container. And we are good to go. Now the other thing I've already cut with this, uh, the croutons here we're going to use. I've already used a cutter and cut those out. So uh, we're ready to go with that. So that's about it for our prep. And now we're going to start cooking. OK, so the first thing we're going to do, we're going to start uh, our cooking process here. We're going to toast the croutons. We've got a little bit of clarified butter here. And uh, I've got it in a hot pan, very hot pan. And I'm going to put these uh, croutons in there. And we're just going to toast them a little bit. Get some flavor going in there. And then we'll set them on a rack over here. So now that we've got that done, Turn that flame down just a little bit. I'm going to get the tenderloin over here. And we're going to season that up. A little salt and pepper. Put the pan. And then we'll season the other side. I'm going to go right on in there. I'm gonna, while that's cooking, I've also got some water going. Right here, we're going to blanch our asparagus in when that comes to a boil. And then I've got my demi glace here coming, coming up to temperature. So I'm going to keep this uh, going and, and searing, turn it over. Sear the other side. You can see we got a nice sear on that. Then I'm going to grab the. temperature down and here's where we want to this little technique of adding some whole butter and we're going to lay a little bit of herbs in there some rosemary some thyme and a little bit of garlic and I leave the skin on the garlic when I do this because it prevents the garlic from burning. If you have it peeled, that bar garlic's gonna burn when you're, when you're doing this basting. And with that butter, we just keep basting 
and picking up some flavors out of that um, the herbs and, and garlic there. So one of the things that, that I did and I want to make sure you guys are aware of is before when we started um, with the beef tenderloin, I bring it to room temperature. So anytime you're cooking a product, I'm going to put these in a little basket here so I can quickly take them out when they're done. Anytime you're cooking a piece of meat, you want to get it up to room temperature. And the reason for that is you don't want the inside of that meat really cold and put it into a pan and then the outside starts to heat up but the inside's still very cold. It's at room temperature, it all kind of comes to temperature at the same time. This way you don't end up with that um, uh, really burned, not burned, but gray on the outside and then rare on the inside. It's a nice consistent uh, color all the way through. So we've got that going, and uh, we keep basting as it's cooking. The asparagus is cooking here, and then when we get done searing this uh, tenderloin here in the in the pan, we're going to go ahead and saute our shallots in that pan as well, and um, make the sauce. So as I baste this and it comes up to temperature, I'm going to cook it to a medium rare. You can cook it to whatever you like, but uh, that's the way I prefer my steak. So this one is going to be done medium rare. These asparagus are uh, just about done. So I'm going to take it out of there and like I said, I'm going to plunge it into ice, an ice bath and uh, remove this. Turn that burner off. And we're going to baste. I wish you could smell this rosemary and garlic and all these flavors coming out. Okay, so that's uh, just about done. You can check it with a, temp with a thermometer if you want. But uh, we're going to leave that. Then I've got a clean pan here I'm going to move that to. And we're going to hold that. So remember we want to let that rest. So while that's resting, we're going to take this pan and I'm going to remove some of the excess butter and those um, the herbs and the garlic and all that stuff. I'm going to put that in there. I'm going to put some of the shallots in here. And I'm going to get that um, going for the sauce. So we'll saute the shallots. I'm going to deglaze with a little bit of the Madeira. Well, you can really smell that. It smells great. And then I'm going to add in my demi gloss. Then I'm going to save this pan because I'm going to strain those shallots out. So as that gets going, turn the heat up there a little bit. I've got some truffles here. I'm going to go ahead and put those right into the pan and I'm going to strain that sauce into that.
All right, things are looking good here. So uh, next thing we're gonna do, we've got this resting. I'm gonna get a saute pan going here and uh, start working on that asparagus. Strain this right into the Okay, so another little thing I like to do is it's called mount it with a little bit of butter. So put a little knob or two of uh, whole butter into there and we'll stir that in and just dissolve that. It gives a nice viscosity to the sauce. It gives a little bit of body to the sauce. But you got to remember once you've mounted that butter in there, you can't bring it to a boil because that butter is going to break out. So, uh... You can see it's really changed the color of that sauce and it really looks nice. So we got that going there. Now I'm going to put a little bit of whole butter in here for the asparagus. And I always use unsalted butter when I cook because this way you can control the amount of salt by adding it however you want to add. So I'm going to put just a little bit of a, uh, shallots in here. I'm going to saute them, get that flavor coming out. Let these uh, come out of the ice bath. And then we're going to toss the asparagus into that shallot. Got it up on a pretty high heat, so this gets going pretty nicely. Then I like to just add a little bit of white wine and just a little bit of chicken stock in there. Season it with salt and pepper. And then we're going to cook this just enough to reduce that, that liquid down. And what that's going to do is it's going to glaze that, that asparagus. Any vegetable that I cook, I like to finish it with just a little bit of shallots, uh, stock, and uh, some wine if appropriate. So uh, what that does is it glazes that product, and uh, it's going to end up with a really nice uh, flavor to it. And then um, the last thing we're going to do here is get a good hot pan and we're going to sear this uh, foie gras. So put that asparagus here in a pan, hold that for plate up. Once this pan gets good and hot, we're going to sear the foie gras. So the foie gras, I've kind of scored the top of it just a little bit for more of a decorative uh, purpose. We're going to put it in the pan. You don't need any oil. You don't need anything. There's enough fat in the foie gras. It's going to come out, and uh, it's going to have plenty of oil. It's going to create plenty of smoke as well. So um, we're just going to uh, wait for that pan to heat up. And uh, as soon as this uh, foie gras is ready, we are going to start plate up. So let's see, got an extra piece here. Just wanna yeah, there we go. You can see how quickly it uh 
starts to sear, creates a lot of smoke. I'm going to go ahead and do this third one just in case. Oh. Beautiful. Very quickly, but look at all the fat that's come off. You can tell how, uh, how good it is for you. <laughs> okay, so now that that's done, we're going to move over to the other side. And we are going to uh, start plating up. Okay, we're going to go ahead and start plating. So again, like I say, it's... Uh, Twin medallions, so I've got two croutons here. We're gonna put those on the plate. We're gonna put the medallions of beef on top of that. Then we're gonna put a slice of foie gras on top of each one. Got a sauce that's going to go over top. And a nice uh, slice of truffle on top as a little garnish. Now you don't have to do the truffle if you don't want to. Adds a little cost to it. And then, like I say, I'm just going to add a little bit of uh, asparagus to this dish. Just set it like that. And there you go. Tornado's Rossini. Hope you enjoy it.